going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm taking a break from the Evo this weekend. A friend of mine just bought a brand spanking new 2022 Ford Bronco. She wants to throw some rock lights on this thing. She asked me if I wanted to do it. I said definitely, so stay tuned. <laughs> If you are new to the channel because you are searching up Ford Bronco or Rock Lights or something like that, this is the usual project that I've been working on. It's a 2010 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. I just finished fabricating up my own little dual catch can setup last weekend. I don't actually have it connected to the car. The paint for the brackets for them are not completely cured just yet. But if you are interested in seeing stuff like that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The Evo is still up on jack stands right now, so I'm going to have to get this thing on the ground. I'll get it out in the driveway, and then I'll get the Bronco in the garage. Bronco is in the garage. I believe it is a 2022. Is this Big Ben edition? I'll be honest, I don't know all the trim levels of the Broncos, but this thing is extremely nice. As you can see, she chose this green. She's nicknamed this thing Nagini. If you're a Harry Potter nerd, you'll get the reference. I've never done a rock light kit. I did some undercar lights on my Focus ST when I had that one. I've done a lot of other little exterior lights and stuff like that and interior lights. It should all be the same concept. The hardest part about any exterior lighting and interior lighting is just running the wires. Here's the kit she got. It's just one of those cheaper Amazon kits. I had good luck with mine on the ST. I never had any issues out of it. I had it for two years and it worked perfectly all the time. So I told her to kind of go with this. There should be eight of them in here, so it'll be two for each wheel well. Let's open it up and see what we've got. Here's everything that's in the box. I've already kind of checked everything out. It is eight of these pods. I will say the pods do feel light. The plastic feels kind of thin. So that's the only thing that concerns me. However, all of the wiring, all of the connections, everything seems to be very tight. There's no loose connections at all. They've got this heat shrink on every connector here. It does come with zip ties. Usually they put a little bag in here, but it looks like they just threw them in there. It does come with a remote, but you also have the option to download an app for it. They gave you hardware for everything. They gave you connectors for the positive and negative terminals. Um, and then they give you a fuse to put in line. This is awesome. The only thing that I don't like is I wish the hardware was just a little bit bigger and beefier. Here is the receiver. I believe this is what receives the signal from the remote and the app. And then it is connected to a switch with the inline fuse going to the battery. And then here is the little switch over here. It also has this little blue wire attached that says goes to a brake light. I did a sequential LED brake light strip on my ST when I had it and it had one of these and when I would tap the brakes it actually would blink with a blue light or it was a white light, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure these little boxes are generic and it will probably do the same thing so I'm probably not going to have to hook this up to anything but when I get it tested with the battery I will test it out anyway. First thing that I'm going to do is get this thing connected to the battery or some sort of power source so that I can test all of these lights out, test the switch out. Make sure that everything is working before I get it on the car. Just finished testing all of the lights out. They all work. The little remote works. 
I'm sure the app will work too. These lights are actually pretty bright. I'm surprised in the daylight, you can tell like this one is not as bright, but these ones that were back here in the engine bay, you could see they were much brighter. For the little brake light wire you saw when I tapped it on there, it just made it solid. So I'm pretty sure that's what it's gonna do whenever I actually hook it up. I don't think she's gonna want these rock lights working off of the brake lights too. So I'm not gonna connect this thing to anything. For my power and ground, I ended up using this little existing bolt right here. So there was nothing already attached, so it worked out perfectly. I wanted to use this one because it was smaller, but I did not have a nut and washer to fit that size. And then for my ground, same thing over here. It was the exact same size of bolt coming through. So I just used the existing nut on top and then put my ground wire underneath. So I'm gonna leave all this as is. I'm going to disconnect this and then I will start working on running these rock lights. I'm going to work on the front wheels first. I think that'll be a little bit easier. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to close the garage door down so that it's dark in here. I'm going to keep two of them connected to the main harness and then I will tie both of those into the battery up front. And then I will take those two and just kind of get them mocked up on here with probably some tape or something just to see where the best placement is going to be to have them for the most part hidden and still have them as bright as possible. Got the first two lights mocked up here on the passenger side. You can see I just used tape to hold them on there. The tape is actually starting to come off on that side. It's kind of dirty and dusty up underneath there, but it's a nice little temporary hold so that you can kind of see where you want them to go. I did do some measuring and this one is just slightly closer to the center than this one is. So I am gonna push this one back just a little bit. And then when I do, I will take a Sharpie or a marker or something and then put it through the holes where the screws are gonna go. Once I get my holes marked, I'm gonna go ahead and get this whole fender liner pulled out of here and then I'm going to go take the driver's side off too so that I can do both sides at the same time and get the holes marked at the same places because I want this thing to be as symmetrical as possible. Finished up pulling the driver's side fender liner. I got the passenger side pulled over here also. Each one of these things has four of these bolts holding it in. So you'll take those out. It's a seven mil or you can use a Phillips head. And there are, I believe, 12 of these clips here. The way that these things work is it's just a Phillips head. It screws out of there and it's just supposed to pull out. But I will say there were three of them on the passenger side and I only had one on the driver's side, but I could not get it to come out of there. And literally the only way to get it out was to just force it out with my little trim and clip tool here. It's not a big deal. I've been working on cars for a little while now and I have learned that these little plastic clips are just not made for taking in and out all the time. I don't ever usually have too many issues with metal hardware, but plastic, it's just not the greatest. Once you get all the clips out, there are two other larger clips that are holding this little weather stripping in. These things came out super easy. Looking at the passenger side here, here are the markings that I made. I could not get my marker to go through that hole. It was too small. So what I did is just marked on either side of it. So I'll have to get this measured a little bit better so that I can make sure that the holes line up. I'll do the same thing for this one. And then I will also do the driver's side. The only thing that I don't like about these lights is the wiring comes out of the side. Most rock lights I've seen, they usually come out of the back so that you can drill a hole in the fender liner and it'll go up and it'll be covered just like that. But since these are coming out of the side, I think what I'm gonna do is just have one going towards the center this way and then have this side going like this. I'll zip tie them together in the center and then what I'll do is probably drill a hole somewhere back here, a couple of small holes, and then I will zip tie them together underneath the fender liner. I'm gonna do everything to the passenger side first and then I will work on doing the driver's side.
just finished up with both the passenger and driver side front. So if you saw what I did, I used the hardware that the lights came with. These things went on super easy. Everything worked out perfectly with this. And all of this should be actually out of the way. I thought I was gonna have to cut the end of these bolts off, but all of that should actually be out of the way. And then I had these left over from my ST when I had to redo the wiring harness for my fog lights. I bought these on Amazon. They're just little pop-in clips that have zip ties on them, but they work really, really well. So I used these to attach the wiring to the inside of the wheel well, and then on the inside of of it too and then i'm going to run my wiring straight out of the back same thing with the driver's side now that i've got both the passenger and driver's side front done i'm going to go ahead and get the fender liners back on and then i'll get the wiring ran in the engine bay Fenders and liners are back on, and then you can see my lights up there ran. Everything went on super easy. I've got my wires just pulled up to the top right here. I don't have them ran just yet. I'm not gonna run them in the engine bay just yet. I wanna do the rears first. That way, if I have to tie those in to the front ones, you know, connect them with a zip tie somewhere together, I can do that. I did go ahead and connect them to the control module temporarily, so I can go ahead and shut the garage down and I can show you guys both of the fronts. There they are. It looks really, really good. Come here and check out the other side. Change up the colors there for you to check them out. Front lights look great. I am going to call it quits for today. I will catch back up with you guys tomorrow and I will get the rear lights installed. It's the next day. I finished up installing the front rocker lights on the Bronco yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the rears. Same thing as the front. I'm going to get the lights mocked up on there with some tape and then I will mark it with my marker and then I will go ahead and pull the fender off and then get the liner out. both passenger and driver side rear fenders off for the hardware it's pretty much the same as the front it uses those same clips I did have to force a couple of them out like I did on the fronts but no issues and then it does use these little nuts there is one on the driver side rear and there are two on the passenger side rear and there's a few of these little bolts at the bottom holding it in I'm gonna get everything measured out on the passenger side so that I can do the same thing on the driver side and then I'll get my holes drilled and get the lights mounted up. All the lights are mounted up on the rear fender liners. I'm not going to actually drill any more holes in the rears like I did for the fronts. I did this for the front ones because I was shooting straight back, but the rears are a little bit different. So because I'm running my wire to the front, I'm not going this way, not to mention all of this is completely blocking it. So what I'm gonna do is once I get the fender liner up on there, I'm just gonna take the wiring and tuck it in between the fender liner and then this right here, and then I'll run it behind the fender liner all the way down, and then I'll probably go in somewhere right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and get both fender liners back on now that I have the lights on both of them. I'm gonna to try to get those wires tucked in between the fender liners and the wheel wells, and then I will work on running the wiring to the front. Both rear liners are back on now, so no problems at all. These things worked out perfectly. Coming up to the front right here, you see where I have it going in. I have it going all the way to the other side. See my wires coming out from underneath over here, and then what I did is just ran them up over the top of that bushing right there. So for the driver's side, they'll come down. I've got this existing wiring harness right here. It runs all the way along the rail right there. I'm just gonna zip tie that along there. Passenger side is the same way, so here are my wires. Here is where it's coming from up on top of that bushing. And then my wiring harness starts a little bit further back, but I'm just gonna run it on top of the frame right there until it beats the wiring harness right here, and then I'll zip tie up a top. I forgot to mention this when I first opened the kit. I didn't actually realize it myself, but four of the lights actually came with extensions already attached to them. However, these extensions are not long enough. You can see right here, I've already opened one of them, but it does not go the whole way. It actually stops right before the wheel right there, so 
much, much shorter than what you actually need. Maybe in a two-door Jeep, this would work out fine. I was worried these weren't gonna come with extensions at all, so luckily I went ahead and ordered some extra five-foot extensions. I'm gonna go ahead and get these things ran across the frame and probably up into the engine bay, and then I will show you where I tie in it. Just finished running all of the wiring. I did it all off camera. Just a matter of zip tying it along the way with that existing wiring harness. Here's the passenger side. I zip tied it on the frame rail right here, and then I tied it into that wiring harness at the top. And then you can see I just kind of zip tied it along the way here. I went over the top of this right here, just like I did in the rear. And then from the engine bay, I just have them coming from the bottom up here. They're coming straight to the top. I've got my two from the front coming over right here. And then I've got them joined at the top right here with a zip tie. Driver's side, same thing, zip tied along this whole wiring harness right here all the way to the front. It does take a little while to fish it around this little front part here into the engine bay. And then I fished them all the way to this corner over here. The last thing that I'm going to focus on finishing is wiring up everything in the engine bay. So my wires over here, this is my shortest length, so it actually ends about right here. So I'm going to have to run the wiring harness all the way over there. And then what I'll probably do is try to get the driver's side to meet up also that way everything is kind of even looking just finished running all of the wiring in the engine bay so you saw up here where i connected the passenger side for i ran it all the way over so here is where my connector with all eight is that's where I ended up having to put it right dead center. So it actually worked out okay. But you can see I've got them zip tied all the way over. These are actually my rear ones going over to the center piece right here and then coming all the way back. Here is the little control module. I've got it zip tied right underneath this little hole right here. And then here is where it is connected to the power and ground source and the switch. Again, the little reverse light, I did not connect to anything. Following the power and ground wire here, so it comes all the way behind the fuse box, all the way around, I've got it zip tied into a little bundle down here. And then you saw yesterday where my ground and my power was at. The switch I planned on mounting on top of the fuse box. She may want it on the inside of the vehicle. I would really hate to run this thing all the way through. That's a pretty big hole to drill. I guess I could cut the wires, but that would be a lot more work. These LEDs do not draw a whole lot of current. I've had them on motorcycles in the past, and like I said, I had undercar lights on my Focus ST when I had that. I had them always connected directly to the battery. I did have them on a switch just like this. I never had any issues with them draining the battery at all. I don't have any double-sided tape right now, so I'm just going to let it hang here. But the install is complete. Everything is finished. I'm going to wait for it to get dark later, and then I will pull the Bronco in the driveway and give you guys a little glimpse of what it looks like with all the lights on. And then I will give my friend a call and she can come pick this thing up. Everything turned out really, really, really nice. Here's one of the back ones. Here's one of the fronts. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will catch you guys next time.